Hello there, I'm your host, Kay Jaco. Today's episode is rated G for everyone. General audiences welcomed as we sit down and talk with my good friend, Paul, and he tells us about trying to get his big feature project up and running off the ground. I think you're going to enjoy this and find it extremely insightful. I know I did. So welcome to IPA Sessions. Welcome to IPA Sessions, a podcast for independent artists. This is a place, as always, where I like to try and provide inspirations for practical applications in entertainment. As always, I like to bring on a special guest, someone that is an independent artist out there working hard trying to promote their work. And today I have a good friend of mine, someone who's been very helpful to me and in my writing career. He is a filmmaker, an actor, a writer, a cosplayer, <laughs> a jack of all trades. We tend to have a lot of those. His name is Paul Zachariah. Paul, say hi to everyone. Hello. Hello, everybody uh, listening. Jacob, thank you so much for having me here. Of course. Of course. Uh, I know today we're going to be focusing on a big feature project that you're working on. But before we get into that, please introduce yourself to everyone. Tell us a little bit about what you do. I, I know that you're a writer. What do you write? Right. So right now, um, I'm writing, <laughs> um, I'm working on some pilot scripts, a uh, couple of features, and my first novel. Uh, in terms of what I've made personally, I've worked on a few short films over the years, and the most recent short film that I made uh, was entered into some festivals back in uh, 2020 and 2021. It was called Last Call, and I wrote and directed it. And uh, right now, I'm trying to get my first feature film uh, off the ground uh, as a director. These are the things that I've been currently working on. So this is actually really fascinating because up until now, we've had on people who have already accomplished their film or their music or any of the projects they're promoting, they've actually already done. You are currently in the process of making this happen. So I think this is a really going to be a really good conversation that we can have today and, and really help those out there that are wanting to do the same thing. You know, they're like, hey, I want to make a movie. And you're like, well, go make one. You're in the moment right now creating creating this. This is something happening right now. We will get into this process here shortly. But before we do, I want to go over a few more things. I know that you're an actor and that you are a filmmaker. You have some short films out there. Uh, what are some of these projects that you have already completed? My biggest project right now that I've completed is a short film called Last Call, which I wrote and directed. Uh, we shot it in uh, 2018, and then I didn't enter it into the festival circuit until uh 2020 and it's been selected for some festivals it's won a few awards it's made honorable mention awesome. list, all that stuff yeah congratulations thank you thank you very much that's been my biggest project to date but right now i'm trying to get my first feature film uh, happening um i've kind of now moved away from shorts i've made you know a few shorts when i attended uh, columbia college chicago you know mostly as student projects and I've worked on a few other things as an actor as well, uh, acting in different projects. Uh, right now, I am trying to move into bigger things. That's fantastic. And I also know, like I stated before, you are a big time cosplayer. And by that, I don't mean that you just dress up. You get into it. You have some amazing cosplay outfits. I saw your Doctor Strange. It was incredible. And then I saw you make a magnificent Maleficent. <laughs> I've seen you do all kinds of of cosplay you've done some really good cosplay like you're not just like oh, let me just dress up and do this like you get into it i've seen you just become the character so tell us about your cosplay i really started getting into cosplaying i want to say about three years ago when i attended my first convention which was uh wondercon in anaheim uh 2019 it kind of really started when i dressed up as wednesday adams for halloween in 2018 and i got such a great positive uh, response from that because I did a photo shoot in this cosplay and it kind of just took everybody by surprise and I really enjoyed doing it. I really enjoyed uh, the way I looked and I was just like, hmm, what else can I do? And so that's when I started doing a lot of uh, cosplaying, particularly like as uh, female characters uh, from film and television, cross-playing as uh, people call it. A cross-play. I love that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's really clever. Yeah. And I've done, you know, male characters as well. Uh, so 
you know, my big ones have been Doctor Strange, Han Solo, Doc Brown, actually. Uh, Freddie Mercury has been a pretty popular one. And most recently, I did uh, Emperor Palpatine uh, from Star Wars for a Star Wars celebration in Anaheim. But my big uh, female ones have been Wednesday Adams, uh, Sabrina Spellman, uh, Disgust from Inside Out. Nice. Uh, I've done Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim and Eleven from Stranger Things. Nice. And oh, yeah. And recently, I did uh, Queen Amadou. Uh, from uh, Star Wars uh, for Star Wars Celebration. Excellent. So you really are a true thespian. (laughs) (laughs) You love it all. Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you for being here today. And I'm excited to talk about your new project because uh, as we you know, stated earlier, this is something different that we haven't done before. You're currently in the process of making this feature film. Can you just kind of fill us in on what you're doing, your process of what's happening right now, your prep, your writing, your finances, everything that you're in the like, take us through the steps of where you are currently right now and how you got there and what you're trying to achieve. So... The process for this feature film that I've been trying to get off the ground, uh, well, first of all, it's called Behind the Lens, uh, and it is actually something that I got hired to write. I ended up connecting with these two aspiring producers uh, in New York via Facebook, actually. They were looking, they had this idea for a feature. They had like a whole treatment and like characters written out for it, and they were originally just looking for somebody to write the script. And uh, when I connected with them, uh, they told me about the project and I was really interested and I was like, yeah, I could totally write this. So I was chosen and I ended up getting my manager, Brent Paxson of creative, creative media partners involved with the project as well. And, you know, I've just been writing and rewriting for it um, behind the lens, basically uh, without, I can't reveal any details about the story, but all I can say right now it is it's freaky Friday meets it's a wonderful life for the social media age. It's a high school film. It's a high school drama with a sense of humor. Uh, Also, uh, it's a fantasy, like magic realism kind of project. Sounds exciting. Thank you, yeah. So, well, originally, uh, when I was brought on uh, for this project, I was just originally just to uh, hire to write it. But I've taken a strong interest in it, and I've decided I actually, I want to direct it. And the creators of this project, uh, their names are uh, Lauren Utek and Erica Williams. They have agreed to that. And I want this to be my feature directorial debut. Reason for this is, uh, like I said, I've grown really attached to this project. and I've grown to really love it and understand it. And I feel like I could, you know, do it justice. Also, I feel like, you know, over the years in LA and like a film school, I've attempted uh, making shorts, I've made stuff and also attempted at making web series and everything. And I've just, I spent a lot of years, you know, before the pandemic working as a set PA, working on set on many different projects. And I feel like I've that's had- how we met. Yeah, that's how we met. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I feel like I've, you know, gained enough experience and knowledge for me to be like, okay, you know what? I think I would like to make a feature. Also, uh, <laughs> this year, I, I, I finally entered uh, my 30s and I'm and now I'm like, okay, I think I, I really need to start making really big career moves now. <laughs> and I feel like I can do it with this. So right now we're at a place with behind the lens where it's we're ready to pitch it. We're ready for it to be made. And we are just waiting to hear back from, you know, any uh, from production companies. And hopefully uh, we can uh, have like a studio or a streaming service interested in this project. Because I really believe not only it can be a great film, but its message about the, the, me- the message of the film uh, tackles, you know, about how harmful social media can be and the dangers of it uh and also just you know not to look at everything online and on your phones and on your apps to take it for what it is it's like there's always something else going on uh behind the scenes behind the lens and i want to i want to make clear that this film is not anti-social media but it's just more of like be careful of how you use it and don't let it take over uh your life i think that's a good message in today's world especially with the 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 use of social media every day amongst uh, ourselves, amongst younger people, older people. Mm-hmm. I look forward to seeing this happen. I'm, I'm very you. much excited about this project. I like the concept. Thank you. Can I ask you something? Can you kind of just take us through, you, you wrote the script out. 
and you pitched the script to the guys. I'm sorry, they hired you to do this, correct? Yes, I was hired to write behind the lens. They, they pitched it to me because, like I said, they needed a screenwriter. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I get this concept. I would love to absolutely, I would, I would love to write this. And now you want to direct it. Yes. So take me through your, your process of... Uh, wanting to write and direct this and getting the ball rolling, so to speak. Right now, the process has been like just collaborating uh, with uh, these producers, uh, the original creators of the project, as well as my manager to get parties interested in it. We've put together a list of potential cast members. We've pulled uh, certain films to use as inspiration, not just story-wise, but also uh, visually. So when I think about what visually this film could look like, I think about a lot of these teen films that have been released uh, like over this past decade. So I think about films like like The Spectacular Now, or uh, The Fault in Our Stars, or uh, Love, Simon, or Lady Bird, or To All the Boys I've Loved Before. You know, I think about that look. Okay. And we've put together a pitch deck already to use for any uh, interested uh, production companies, anybody who might be interested. And we use certain uh, names of actors uh, and actresses who we feel could really fit these parts. And right now, the big thing that we're doing right now is just getting people interested, like any investors, any producers who would be interested in this. And uh, Lauren and Erica, the creators, producers of the project, they've also been... uh, doing a great job at like putting together a uh, proposed budget uh, for the project, uh, which is great because I'm not, I'm not great at budgeting. I'm not great <laughs> with like numbers and that kind of stuff. I'm a creative guy, but you know, it's great to have somebody who's like, you know, interested in the fi- financial uh, stuff and the logistics of it and everything. And right now we're looking at this to be like a 10 to $12 million film, which is, you know, pretty cheap these days. Uh, it's like low budget. Still consider low budget. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask, do you still consider this to be an independent project? Would you consider yourselves to be an independent film? How do you plan to go about making this project work? Do you have a a plan to crowdsource? Do you have a plan for GoFundMe? Are you guys actually looking at real big time investors? Right now, we are actually trying to look at big time investors and big time producers at any of these uh, production companies uh, get like a studio interested or a streaming service interested right now. uh, I'm not trying to take the crowdfunding route just because I've done it before. I've had experience with it before and it's been mostly good. It's just, I see this project being a little bit bigger. I know that sounds, you know, overly ambitious of me, but... There's nothing wrong with ambition. Yeah, thank you. But no, I just feel like this can move beyond being just like an indie project. You want this to be your stepping stone into a actual big time studio career. Is that correct? So you're wanting to have your independent work, what you represent, and using this as your stepping stone to show like, hey, I've done this for this you know, long. I'm ready. Are you ready for me? Yes, exactly. I feel like I want to be able to use this project, whether how independent or how studio backed it is, and use it to help further my own directing career because i do have ideas that i want to take like ideas that of my own that i created as well and but i feel like behind the lens can be a great step towards that not just because like oh i wrote the screenplay or whatever and because like i want to direct but because like i know that this idea also has mass appeal it's not just an indie project it won't just appeal to you know the indie crowd or the festival crowd or whatever i believe that this actually does have a uh, mainstream appeal that's excellent Thank you. Let me ask you something. Usually what I try and do is uh, I try to ask some questions about things that you're facing and you're actually doing everything right now. So at the current time, at your moment that you are with this project, has there been a really big challenge? Like what's the hardest thing that you've had to basically overcome so far? What has been your biggest challenge as of now? Well, right now I'm facing the biggest challenge of trying to get somebody interested in this project. But before, my biggest challenge with Behind the Lens was, I think it was a few drafts ago when we were trying to properly nail what the message was going to be and what the climax of the film was going to be. Well, let me take that back. We knew we knew what the message was, but we were just trying to figure out the best way of how to get to that uh, with our uh, main character, who was a teenage girl, you know, going through issues of like growing up and also being attached to social media. And I remember I had hit kind of a roadblock a few drafts ago, but what was so great is being able to 
talk and brainstorm and collaborate with Lauren and Erica and my manager Brent on all these different ideas on how to make it work. And I remember, you know, we had a few uh, Eureka moments during the writing process. And I always love those moments. <laughs> those are always satisfying. <laughs> exactly. So when I had those, I was just like, oh, I know what to do now. And they've been so <laughs> great and supportive. And we've just, we've been really just great at like getting along and collaborating on this. And so, you know, I would say like, that's just been the biggest challenge so far. The thing is, I know there are going to be obviously bigger challenges uh, going forward once this film hopefully soon gets uh, greenlit. And yeah. then there'll be the challenges of, you know, uh, pre-production and production and post and all that. So I am I, I am anticipating those, but I am uh, ready because I know I can make it work. That's excellent. And that's like, that's a great you know, mindset going into this is already meeting early obstacles that you have to overcome. Mm -hmm. Paul, with you being an independent artist and with your history and your experience in filmmaking and writing, and now you're taking that stepping stone to the next level, trying to make a, a big budget or, or to, to us, the, probably the biggest budget you've had so far with a studio quality movie. What is something unexpected that you've come across in this process that you basically had to learn in the moment, something that maybe you had to adapt, something that you weren't quite prepared for, but you had to learn in the moment how to get through it. So one of the big things with Behind the Lens, in fact, the biggest thing that stands out uh, from the other projects that I've worked on that I've created is that I'm not the creator of this project. This project is the creation of Lauren Utek and Erica Williams. And it's their baby, it's their idea, and I am here to basically make it happen uh, for them uh, because I believe in the story and I think they've created something great here. And if anything, this project has really taught me about collaboration uh, way more than any of my other projects have. Oh, that's fascinating. And I've really been enjoying the collaborative experience with them and with my manager, Brent. And and so because of this, they are the owners of this project, uh, but I am still very much a big believer of this project and help in helping to make it happen. Yeah, bringing it to life. Bringing it to life because not only... Do I believe that this can help me make my own projects happen? But I'm hoping that it can teach other people how to properly collaborate with others. And yeah. I've taken what they've given me in terms of their their pitch and their treatment and their ideas and their characters. And I've helped breathe a uh, new life into them. Uh, not completely come to life since we still don't, have not seen these characters on screen yet. But... It's been a very enlightening experience working with them uh, so far on this. And I know one thing that I've also been anticipating is what if maybe I don't have the opportunity to direct it, uh, given whatever is decided by a studio who wants to buy the rights to the project. That is something that if it has to happen, I'll, I'll understand. But... I'll still walk away knowing that I had a huge hand in making it happen and it could hopefully lead me to other things. That's a really great point to bring up. I mean, that's, you know, that's something that when you're going into a project, you being an artist yourself going into this project and making this happen uh, and understanding that, you know, you're in a collaboration with others that uh -huh. you would like to direct, but the possibility is there that if it gets sold to a studio and they want to bring in someone else that you have to kind of recede that, but you're open to being there for them. If they want you to direct this, you're a hundred percent on board, but if not, you've already cre helped create this story with them. You've helped, you know, give it life, so to speak by writing mm -hmm. it out. So you have something that you've already accomplished that you're proud of. That really does seem something unexpected, but you're also, even though it's unexpected, you're preparing yourself mentally to face that challenge if it comes up and to know that like, it's okay. It's what a collaboration is for. 
Yeah. Um, I think that's, I think that's really cool that you are learning something new from this and that the creators you're working with seem to be really neat too. They seem to be really cool. They seem to be focused. They seem to have the same goals that you do. So that that's good knowing that you're going into this and this collaboration, even if you don't get to direct sounds like down the road, you're building a partnership with these producers, with these creators that maybe they can help you with your next project. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of the things uh, that we had talked about uh, when I expressed my interest in directing is that um, in order order for for uh getting a production company or studio whoever uh interested in the project and also just interested in me because the idea is also to pitch me as well as a director is like um well i've had a lot of experience on set and so i know how a set works and i don't want to waste people's time uh and money as well also i've written and directed an award-winning short film not a feature but it's like i have some experience there also uh i'm gonna be cheap to hire <laughs> because i'm not a, <laughs> i'm not a big name yet yeah <laughs> so yeah keyword yet <laughs> yeah so 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 that's i'm hoping that whoever is interested in behind the lens can take a chance on me and also more importantly take a chance on this project uh yeah. this great story that uh uh, Lauren and Erica have created. That's awesome. And my next question for you, you may have even answered this with the whole collaboration thing, but what is the most valuable takeaway that you've learned from your experience so far with doing something new for your first time, this being the first big feature that you're tackling as a screenwriter and hopefully as a director, what's the most valuable takeaway you've had from this experience? The one thing that I find very valuable now uh, when it comes to collaboration is uh, communication, which is also part of the big theme of the film as well uh just communicating uh your thoughts and your feelings and your ideas and everything and i really value that experience here in the development stage and what i'm hoping to take away is that that same mentality of collaboration and brainstorming and uh, camaraderie can be carried on through the pre-production uh, production and post-production of the film Excellent. and that's something i want to be able to bring uh, to the table. That's great. And I know that this is a little different than our normal, uh, than my usual discussions I have, because usually when I talk to someone, we're promoting work that's already been accomplished. This is something you're in the process of doing. You're actually finally getting a chance to basically give yourself a moment to step out of the independent world and really collaborate, really work together with, with a studio, with uh, people who you've not had a chance to in the indie world work with before. So you're mm -hmm. really building who you are, what you represent. And I feel like you're going to be bringing a lot to the table because of your experience as an indie director, as a film writer and all that. What I want to know is because you're doing something new, you are pushing through trying to make this happen. Mm -hmm. What's your drive? What drives you? I knew I wanted to make films at an early age. I knew I wanted to be able to entertain and create when I was young. I discovered that calling very early on and it's just what I've been focusing on for years and years. And I feel like right now, with the experience that I've had working on set on countless films and shows and meeting so many different people, and after going through a few creative slumps over the years and also having gone through a pandemic where I was able to get some of my creative edge back and now that i'm <clears throat> in my 30s um <laughs> i've realized you know what it's time i gotta make these big things happen my drive has just been about me looking at everything and being like okay i gotta do it whatever it takes so that's kind of my mindset right now. It's funny. You say you got to do it. Um, we have a recurring theme on this show where everyone at some point just goes, you just do it. You just do it. Exactly. And and, and I love that that's the because I, I like that. I like that, you know, motivation to me. I, I feel the same way. Like you, you just got to do it. You got to mm -hmm. push yourself beyond your limits. You got to really believe in yourself and motivate. It's up to you at the end of the day. Collaboration helps working with people, finding the right groups. All that really goes far. But it won't happen if you don't do it. Exactly. Exactly. I've just been looking at all different uh, options and avenues on how to make this happen. But also just, you know, trying to talk about it and build it up and hype it up as much as I can. Just let people know what I'm doing. 
Because some people I know are still surprised by some of the stuff that I've been doing. Uh, like some people don't even uh, know, like people I've known forever, like, oh, you act or like you voice act or you've been working on these things. I thought you just did this. And I'm just like, no, no. <laughs> so it's like I'm trying to put myself out there more using social media, of course, and just like talking about it and everything. So that yeah. a way that social media can be used for good. You know, right? Yeah, I mean, putting yourself out there is a great way to not only promote yourself, but to just showcase what you can do, mm -hmm. uh, which I guess is also promoting yourself. <laughs> yeah. So, Paul, I, I want to kind of, as we wind this down, I want to ask you: Is there anything that you would say to anyone who is looking to do what you do? If there's someone out there looking to tackle their first big feature, whether it's as an independent artist to make their own indie project, or someone who's actually trying to do the same thing, you know, work with some creators and producers and managers and try and pitch to a studio to get a, a big feature project going. Is there any advice that you can give them? Yes. Don't rush the writing process. I'm going to tell you this. I first started writing Behind the Lens in September of 2020, uh, because that's uh, when I first met uh, Lauren and Erica uh, via uh, online. I, I still have yet to meet them in person, actually. <laughs> We've only talked on Zoom and Facebook, whatever, but I digress. Yeah, That's when I started writing it, and then I wrote draft after draft after draft. And it wasn't until, I want to say, maybe February of this year when we all finally landed on a draft that we feel is pitchable uh that we can have you know producers and you know managers and agents be able to read and share with other people because we wanted to take our time with this and make sure that we got the script down before we could be like okay we're ready to get it out there and get it made because that's that's the thing with behind the lens right now right now the status is we've got a great solid draft here and we uh, are are just trying to pitch it. It took a while, but we love the progress that we made with this uh, so far. So that's the big thing. It's like before you start with all this stuff, just have a good script, a uh, good draft ready and take your time with it and have other people uh, uh, read it and give feedback and everything. Because I'll tell you, one of the big things that we did actually with Behind the Lens was last year in January, we actually did a Zoom table read for it. We invited a whole bunch of our friends who are like actors and writers to join, read, uh, the script, read it out loud, act out the parts, and then afterwards uh, they gave feedback. And it went great. Like everybody did a great job and everybody gave such great feedback. And it was just great to hear a lot of these, like, you know, outside voices uh, talk about the script and the ideas and everything. And we actually we made everybody sign an NDA uh, as well uh, to not reveal any details about it. And you know, same thing with me. It's like I signed an NDA, I can't reveal any details about the story yet. But doing that, as well as just, you know, making sure that we just comb through the script and making sure everything was good. That's a big thing that I want everyone here to know. Just make sure that you've got a great script before you move on, move on to the next big steps. And don't rush it, you know? I think that's excellent advice for not only people who are filmmakers, but for script writers, for screenwriters, yeah. writers in general. Don't rush your process. Take your time. And I know from personal experience, thanks to having worked with you many times, uh, my I myself, me and my my buddy, we we co-write together. We write out scripts. Yep. You've been an excellent help helping us kind of get some uh, critique. Uh, you suggested us do a table read. And honestly, every time we finish a, a script now, we, we write our script out, we get our first draft and we rewrite what we feel that we need to. Then after only one re rewrite, we will pitch a table read to people and have them come in. And that feedback that you get, that critique that you get, the the notes that you get for things that maybe you overlooked or didn't think about. Sometimes you write, cre uh, you create these characters that you may not find that interesting. Someone else finds something really fascinating about them. And they're like, you should elaborate on this more. So it's a really good opportunity, especially as a writer to do table reads, get together with your friends and just make sure that they have a fun time and that they can act out the parts and they are going to be able to act out the parts if you wrote it right. Exactly. So yeah. I think that's yeah. really good advice. 
Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and uh, thank you for inviting me to your table reads as well. Um, of course, they, they're, they've always been fun, and thank you for joining mine as well. Of course, because I do think, yeah, they they are very uh, beneficial, and they're also like great brainstorming sessions. Like there are many times I've done like other table reads after behind the lens uh, for a lot of my other projects, uh, like a few of my pilots and like a couple of my features, and. I we just also a lot of great ideas end up getting thought of just by hearing other people talk and like listening and and I'm just like oh wow I I, should, I didn't think of that maybe I should include that in the next draft yeah because I'm I'm like right. I'm I'm like like if if I hear something that I know sounds better than what I came up with I will very much like include it into the script um, <laughs> because I'm just like oh wow actually that that is a very good story it's a very good idea it's a very good story idea so yeah so that that's that's what it is um just you know and when you do it like a zoom table read you know invite writers so they can uh you know read along and listen and give feedback invite actors so they can read the parts and help give your characters a voice and yeah. also just invite um it would also help to invite other people who may not be writers or actors, just people from all different, you know, work in other uh, aspects and departments of uh, filmmaking. I like to myself when I do these table reads, I invite friends that just enjoy movies that have yeah. a wide range of tastes. And I'm like, look, you enjoy movies. Can I bring you to this table read just so you sit back and listen and just kind of see if you can see this movie playing out and give me your feedback. Cause even though you're not a writer, you're not an actor, you have nothing to do with the film world. I mm -hmm. want to hear what you have to say because you're an audience. Yeah. You are, you are who I'm trying to make this for. Yeah, you're kind of like focus grouping it before it even becomes a thing. Exactly. Yeah. Paul, I have one more question for you. You are, as we stated, you are in the process of pitching this feature, trying to get this running with your uh, creators, Lauren and Erica, correct? Correct. Are you able to elaborate on that process? Is there anything that you can discuss about how you guys are going about making these pitches? If anyone out there has written a script and they want to try and pitch that script or they actually have filmed a feature and they want to try and pitch that feature, is there anything that you can tell them that would help? Is there any process you can maybe walk us through what you have done? What I have done right now, what we have done in terms of pitching this so far, we did pitch it to uh, this one uh, production company uh, who they, were, they ended up not being interested in. I think they were looking for uh, something a little bit more specific in terms of uh, genre. And right now, uh, my manager, Brent, and I were in the process of reaching out to other production companies as well as representations of certain potential cast members, including one big name who I see for the main role. I'm not going to say yet because uh, I understand legal stuff. I get you. Yeah. 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 So it's like, I, I don't, but that's very exciting. Yeah. So I had someone that I have in mind and if this person passes on it, it's fine. We still got other potential ideas for other potential uh, cast members, actors who we see playing these parts that that's the thing right now. Just we're, we're just talking about it right now. We're, we're, Talking about it in a way where we're trying to get people interested. I know Lauren and Erica are talking to somebody over in uh, New York because that's where they live. Talking to somebody there about trying to make the project happen. So who knows who might be interested in it? Who knows who they know who might be interested in it? That's the process right now. Just hyping it up. <laughs> good. I mean, hype is good. Paul, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for sharing as much as you could share about this big project of yours. I hope that you do succeed. In fact, I know you will succeed. Thank you. Uh, as you said, you can't rush it. Time is on your side. And I can't wait to have you back. And then we get to have this discussion again about how you actually made this project. And I, I look forward to that conversation. Thank you so much. Is there anything that you would like to plug for yourself right now? Is there anything you want to promote? Your other work? Like I said, is there any crew or casting that's happening at the moment anything like that please feel free to plug yourself promote the crap out of yourself right now sir thank you uh so right now um i'm just waiting to hear back from a couple of 
screenwriting competitions about a couple of projects that I wrote. Uh, one of them is a pilot, a sitcom pilot, comedy pilot that I wrote uh, called My Cousins, which is actually about uh, uh, Middle Eastern Americans. And this one is very important to me as a Middle Eastern American Canadian. This is probably like the biggest TV project that I'm also trying to get off the ground. And right now I'm just trying to generate interest for it because, you know, when it comes to... Um, representation matters, which I believe in 100%. I feel like Middle Eastern people, Middle Eastern Americans are often left out of that conversation. And so there are things slowly happening for uh, Middle Eastern Americans uh, on TV. Got Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah, Moon Knight. Uh, yes, first Egyptian superhero. I was so happy when I saw that. I mean, I like Moon Knight fine, but I think that was one of my new favorite MCU moments. I knew you were happy because I know you're a big superhero comic book fan. I was like, yeah. finally, Paul gets a representation. Yes, yes. So I was really happy that I met Moon Knight. I was also going to say uh, Rami as well, which is on Hulu, uh, which nice. everybody should watch. And that yeah, and I'm just I'm trying to be you know part of this small movement that's happening uh, right now with uh, my show, my cousins, which is right now still just a pilot, a script, but I'm trying to make that happen. Um, I'm also uh, writing a novel, a coming of age supernatural story. It's actually about witches. It's called Spell Creek Manor, which I'm hoping can be like the first in a series. <laughs> um, there you go. Thank you. And I actually uh, just resurrected a project that has been, I first started writing it 15 years ago when I was in high school. Um, it's called Small World. No, it's not based on the Disney ride. <laughs> it's actually very loosely based on my own experiences in high school. And we actually just did a table read for that. So, and which is funny because, you know, I've been talking about Behind the Lens, which is a, a high school film. And, uh, Small World is also like a high school film, but, I, I, but Small World is my creation and it's a completely, it's also just a completely different story, completely different, I would even say a different genre as well. Uh, but um, I don't just want to make high school projects. I want to make that clear. I have other ideas for stuff that I want to do, but Small World is by far my most personal story. There's nothing wrong with being the next John Hughes, okay? <laughs> No, definitely not. Yeah, I've no John Hughes has had a big influence as well on a lot of my uh, own writing, and I've always seen this project as kind of like a John Hughes esque project. But those are my big things right now. Um, I'm also, you know, I'm still cosplaying uh, as uh, much as I can, and I'm, I just got back from Star Wars Celebration, and I'm going to San Diego Comic Con in July for the first time ever. So that's going to be fun. Excellent. Yeah, and uh, also, um, and I actually I had just started in a short film and co-produced uh, it as well uh, it's called dog on it and it's just been uh uh entered into some festivals it was actually uh written and directed starring uh my friend hunter james cox uh and it was a collaboration that we did and so that's been a big thing and yeah that's all i have to plug in that's excellent uh if anyone wants to reach out to you paul if uh fellow writers out there fellow filmmakers they want to collaborate since that's something that we're learning today about collaboration is there a way they can reach out to you do you have any kind of social media that you'd like to plug yeah you can reach out to me on my instagram uh which is pollywood forever and that's pollywood with a p p a u l l y a p a u l y wood forever gotcha no four in the forever just forever the, the way the word is spelled out if you also want to reach out to me uh for photography i do photography as well um i have a separate instagram for that uh paul zechariah photography awesome well thank you so much paul and i i am a fan i was lucky to be there for one of your table reads for the pilot of my cousins as someone who loves sitcoms i really look forward to seeing it because i come from the south i have a beautiful family of rednecks that i love and adore and i just have to say there are so many things that rednecks and middle easterns have in common and i hope you are able to bridge <laughs> that gap for us i hope so yes yes for sure thank you and thank you for thank you for attending uh, that table read again and uh, thank you for being a fan i'm hoping i'm hoping big things can happen for that one as well as all my other projects and of course behind the lens uh 
hoping for something soon this year. <laughs> well, we'll keep our eyes out for you. Thank you again for being here. Uh, thank you guys for listening. I hope you found today to be inspiring. I hope you found it encouraging. And honestly, I hope you found it helpful. If you're out there trying to make your own feature film, I hope that you got some words of wisdom here from Paul and that he helped give you that encouragement that you need to understand the realities that you're going to have to face. He is still in the process of making this happen. He hasn't even gotten it off the ground to film yet, but already he's told us the challenges and the, the things that he's had to look at and, you know, just tackle head on. So be prepared for that, but don't be discouraged by it. If you want to do it, just do it. Thank you guys. Until next time, stay golden. Thanks for tuning in to IPA Sessions. To help support this podcast, please rate and review and click that subscribe button to follow for new bi-weekly episodes. And if you're an independent artist out there looking to promote your work or yourself, please reach out to me via social media at IPA Sessions on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also reach out to me via email at IPA Sessions Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and I hope you felt inspired.